before I begin, you know, huge shout out to Renel. Renel, uh, without being an IITian, you've actually defined sustainable living and here I am. Despite being an IIT and asking people in the break, should I wear a tie? They're like, no sir, not sustainable. So you've done what I couldn't do. So kudos to you and kudos to the team for putting up a show that seems to be so sustainable. Design has traditionally been the process of understanding the requirements of people and translating it into innovative, value-driven solutions that not only meet functional requirements, that is, they solve problems, but they are also aesthetic. Typical applications of design have been aimed at providing better user experiences, more productivity to people, as well as optimizing resource utilization. So what is sustainable design? If you go by the textbook, sustainable design typically is the approach to creating products and services that have considered economic, social, and environmental impacts. But I think I'm going to add two more layers to it. The first layer is the layer of longevity and flexibility, and the other layer is the layer of continuous value addition. Now, why do I say what I say? For sustainability, we need continuous value creation. The day value creation stops, sustainability comes to a grinding halt. Right? Now, sustainability has many dimensions to it, many different facets. But in today's talk, I'm going to be focusing on some key areas of the application. Before I actually continue, I'm sure none of us here is worried about why we need sustainability, right? I'm, I'm sure everyone is on the same page. We need sustainability because at the end of the day, it is about our future. So here is what businesses do to make themselves sustainable and design sustainably. The first is people first. So when you keep people first, what you do is you try to optimize between process life cycles, between user experiences, and between resource utilization. Now, this creates a huge opportunity for businesses. What they can do is they can own the product from start to finish. They can create a product that not only functions as a product for one life cycle, but at the end of that product's life cycle, you can use it as a raw material or probably an entirely new product for a different life cycle. Let me give you a simple example, right? Think, think of it from a furniture seller's perspective. You sell furniture to a customer. The customer uses the furniture for maybe a couple of years, gets bored. You say, okay, give this back to me. Let me add some value to it and let me resell it to probably those who are interested in a slightly different modified design. This is what we call as the circular economy, and this drives sustainable, right? Another way to do this is to minimize resource utilization by way of what? Simply, by way of recycling. For example, recycled packaging, and I think everyone in the audience today knows that businesses have already started down that route, right? And this is where design becomes very critical because sustainability needs design. Another sustainable design practice that businesses can actually incorporate that will help them is to follow a top-down approach from the management. What do I mean by a top-down approach? You see, today most of the critical business problems don't come in at the concept stage of a business, right? Things are quite clear. Everyone knows this is what I need to do in my business. The challenge actually comes in at an implementation level. Why? simply because there are no clear guidelines, there is no clear directive coming from the top management. And this is where the management has got to step in and say, hey, look, you know, we are focused on A, B, C, D principles that will help our business do a little better. In fact, as an entrepreneurship coach, I've actually been fortunate to interact with quite a few businesses which do exactly this. And that's why today you're seeing a lot of the businesses are turning towards the unicorn stage relatively early. It's because their focus today is on trying to become sustainable as best as they can, as early on as they can. Top management must actually galvanize the entire team to focus on sustainable design. A third way of actually incorporating sustainable design in business is to focus on energy efficiency and capacity utilization. Big words again, right? Put it simply, energy efficiency simply means businesses should use as much energy as they need, not as much as they want, because the wants are endless as we all know, right? And at the same time, trying to maximize the benefits from whatever available resources they actually have. 
Now, let me take an example, two examples rather. The first is that of corporate office spaces. I mean, we pass, the, pass them by every single day. Have you noticed how even in the daytime, lights are on everywhere, ACs are on at full blast, computer terminals are not idling away. I mean, they're on, they're not off, right? They're idling, but they're actually on, guzzling electricity. Right? Another example I'll take is actually the example of our auditorium when we were in the break. None of them were in the auditorium at that point in time, and yet somehow we focused on keeping the lights on. Now, I'm not saying that's not sustainable. Right? Well, there may be cases where we need that to happen. But the point is, this is a mentality that we've developed. Since we have it, let's keep it. This has got to change. Taking such small micro steps towards sustainability will go a long way. As they say in Hindi, Boon boon karke hi sagar banta hai. Okay, have you all noticed today that a lot of these businesses have shifted to emails as a means of communication over the traditional paper kind of communication where they used to send across postal reports, etc. Right? So these businesses today are actually having conversations with the customers. They're explaining to them why is it that we need or why is it that we value sustainability? And what this does is a wonderful two things. The first thing is, it shifts the customer's preferences and makes them aligned with what the business wants because there's a dialogue happening. And the second is, it actually helps in developing a brand connect and building the brand, right? Just a very simple, sweet, effective way whereby businesses are able to not only turn more sustainable, but also inherently leverage this virality to create more business. And this is saving businesses big bucks today, while it is also making customers feel aligned to the cause. It makes them feel as if they are part of this cause. All of these things, one by one, are your small steps towards sustainably designing businesses. Moving on, the second area I want to focus on, education. Something that's very, very close to my heart. How is it that we can design more sustainable education models. Well, to be honest, the first thing that comes to my mind, and it's very easy to say, quite difficult to do, is to incorporate change. We all know that our syllabi take ages to change, right? We are all aware that it takes ages to do anything different. In fact, very recently, because I'm a teacher trainer as well, I was doing trainings for a set of teachers who were very senior. Okay? They were teachers who have had 15, 20 years of experience, and when the lockdown happened, they had to switch to online teaching. Now, when I was taking the workshop with them, the training with them, what I realized is none of them even knows how to create a Google form, how to create a Google Classroom. I was getting simple questions like, sir, button kidar hai? Right? If this is the state of affairs of our teachers, imagine what will go on to our students, right? If we don't take immediate remedial action to change with the times, our pedagogy, our educational structure, we risk the danger of having obsolete pedagogy and irrelevant information very, very soon, right? Yes, change is hard, we all agree, but not changing is going to hit you harder. Another area that I feel we can implement sustainable education design models in is basically on fitness for purpose versus fitness for examinations, right? Our education system today, it seems, has been inherently designed with this concept that a child who is born must be a genius, right? The Sharma ji ka ladka next door. The focus is entirely on performance alone, right? It is not on the process at all. And this is where I think the biggest design change has to come in. Because remember, education is not about those awesome subjects or those wonderfully colored textbooks that we use, right? Education is about empowering the child, unlocking his or her potential, giving them the tools to unlock their creativity and stimulate thinking. Remember, at the end of the day, creativity breeds design. And this is an area which I'm personally very invested in because I feel there's a lot that can be done here. Remember, only if we change our objectives can we transform the outcomes. And at the end, I think everyone's waiting with bated breath, right? We're talking of sustainable design. Where is sustainable living space design? Ultimately, when we think sustainable design, the only thing that comes to our mind is houses. 
right? Flats, bungalows with nice ventilation, with solar panels. And that's what I've come to finally, right? Uh, I'm not actually going to focus much on solar energy. I think a lot of it has been spoken about in international fora. Everyone is aware that solar is a boon in many ways. Everyone is aware that solar energy generates electricity actively and passively you can use it to heat water which can be used in myriad ways, right? So that's not going to be the focus of my talk for the next few minutes. I'm actually going to focus on those few areas that are less known. Now, before I begin or continue, let me ask you a question. Do you think that the concrete that we use in building structures is sustainable. How many of you think concrete is sustainable? Okay. I see practically no hands. Maybe that's because of the lighting or practically because none of you believes it is. Well, here's something that's going to probably transform the way you think. In fact, concrete is sustainable. How is it that you ask? I'm going to actually bust a couple of myths here, right? The first thing is concrete at its end of life can be pounded up and used for paving, or it can be used for filling, or it can be used as aggregates for newer concrete, right? Therefore, it is reusable, one of the chief characteristics of something that's going to be sustainable. The other thing is, when it comes to concrete, the raw materials used in concrete, what is it? Sand, gravel, water, even some types of cement, what is cement? limestone, iron ore, alumina, all of these things are available in nature. So it is also eco-friendly. Then why is it that all of you feel, oh, concrete is not sustainable? I'll tell you. There are two major reasons for it, right? The first reason is that concrete is non-biodegradable. If you make something with concrete, it doesn't break down all that easily. But the, the workaround is you tend to use and reuse it all over again. And the second area where people are worried is because concrete is relatively impervious, any runoff water is not going to be able to seep into the earth very easily, right? But does this actually mean that we discard concrete altogether? And this is what I want to focus on. Certainly not, right? The entire cornerstone of sustainable design rests on one principle and one principle alone. Fitness for purpose. Choose the materials that are going to benefit you maximally while also being environment friendly, right? If there are materials which can be replaced, by all means, go ahead and replace them. But if those properties are present in certain types of materials, please use those materials. There's no need to compromise on functionality. There are enough materials out there which can do both to varying degrees, right? But de develop and design structures, develop and design living spaces functionally. Right? After all, remember, we come from a land where our fathers quite literally built houses brick by brick. Right? And I'm sure, I'm, I'm hoping rather, all of you are aware that bricks can actually be a great building material in compressive loading. That is, you know, in structures such as domes and arches, you will be amazed at what kind of load-bearing capacity it has. Again, choosing the right materials becomes key. Another area that is very less spoken about is ventilation design. Right? So when we are designing sustainable structures, the easiest way to improve airflow in your houses is to be able to incorporate cross ventilation. Cross ventilation design is effective for on two levels. One, it reduces the dependency on fans. Like one of our speakers earlier said, he's not needed to use fans except in the last four years. With cross ventilation, that will probably come down even further, right? And the other is obviously it brings in oxygenated air. Can we design better ventilation even over and above cross ventilation? Certainly, right? We can always design convective ventilation where we've got small ventilation ducts or windows at the bottom of the room to allow cold air to come in and at the top of the room to allow hot air to escape out. It's possible to design sustainably. The only challenge is obviously we require spaces with high ceilings. So it may not be practical everywhere. But nonetheless, cross-ventilation is available at all points in time for you to incorporate in your design sustainably. Another very interesting area that, you know, I came across recently when I visited a friend's house in Alibagh is natural lighting. So what this gentleman had done is he'd actually cut small holes in the walls of his rooms and he had covered them with glass bottles, right? Now, in the bright daylight, Light streamed in through those glass bottles of different colors. I had rooms that looked red, I had rooms that looked green. It was disco lighting. Uh, to a certain taste, it was desirable as well. But the point here I'm trying to make is that, you know, it allowed natural lighting to come in during the day, and therefore there was no need for lighting right up to 6 p.m. in the evening, right? If we can incorporate such small changes, they're going to go a long way. In fact, I think many of you may 
also be aware of the initiative called a liter of light, where they actually take a plastic bottle or a bottle, fill it up with water, and then add a little bit of bleach to prevent algae growth there. And this water-filled bottle is then used as a bulb. How do they do it? When light streams through that bottle, it actually refracts and spreads through the entire room. So you can use these as light bulbs. If you haven't come across this, I recommend you actually look at it. One of the very wonderful ways of actually coming up with sustainable design. And finally, the last area that I want to touch upon is rainwater harvesting. I think rainwater harvesting is one of the most magnificent ways of actually utilizing rainwater for long-term purposes. Right? The commonest way of doing it is rooftop rainwater harvesting. What you basically do is you connect a pipe to the rooftop and any water that's running off after the rains is collected either in storage tanks or even in underground pits, right? In fact, you can actually create pits underground. What that does is it allows the water to flow through layers of sand and gravel like a natural filter. So your groundwater table that's recharged is recharged very beautifully with water that is relatively less contaminated. And in fact, even if you want to water your gardens, you can actually do something called a surface contouring. What's that? You actually design your spaces in such a way that when rainwater hits the floor, it actually flows through your garden spaces or those spaces that you want to irrigate. Therefore, the amount of water requirement you will need for irrigation will also come down substantially. Right? These are but small steps in the entire process of sustainable design. Finally, as I reach the end of my talk, I'd like to leave you with only one key takeaway, and that's very important for each one of us to understand. Sustainable design isn't about building better processes or better strategies. Absolutely not. Sustainable design is about building a better future for all of us, and I hope each one of us is going to be invested in it. Thank you.